Ian, who is yeah. top, top left of my Zoom picture, <laughs> so, so people know where my eyes are going. Um, and we've got AJ down at the bottom, surrounded by every weapon that's ever been forged <laughs> in Asia <laughs> and a few other countries. Brothers, it's so, so great to to meet you and, and, and to have a, a chat about areas that I find um, fascinating <laughs> for our friends at home. So it, um, AJ, AJ has served. AJ's been in the thick of it in, in, in the Middle East, uh, uh, like many of our guests. Um, Ian runs the Kung Fu Retreat. Yeah, that's right. Um, We'll, we'll get all the details of that in, in a sec- second, Ian. But over there in, in, in the land of the smiles, beautiful Thailand, one of my favourite places um, on earth. I think I'm fortunate of, to have dropped in there about four times now. Yeah. That's why my nose is pretty crooked. Um, <laughs> be careful <laughs> on a night out in Pat Pong. Do not uh, take on a bouncer. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the story behind it. Okay. <laughs> and we're not just here to talk about the um, incredible martial arts, um, but also the journey from trauma, um, the journey, uh, the journey from in what I call to enlightenment. Um, and I suggest anybody hops on it because for me, it's just been the most special thing in my life. Just realised I haven't got my headphones on, so I'll whack them on. Put a bit of head protection on so I don't get a dink in my head for the rest of the day. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you fine. Yeah, who said Marines can't do technology? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's get into it. Fascinating. Um, Ian, what's your, ju- what's your journey been like, and how, how did you end up in, in Asia? Uh that, that's such a long story that it, it's yeah okay uh, aj over to yeah. you so <laughs> <laughs> no i'm sorry i'm sorry continue uh, I, I started off being a very ordinary kid in sutton on the south edge of london um used to i, I like to fight you know i used to fight with gangs i've always been quite clever and I did well at school and I got to university and when I got to university they had a kung fu club and then with, that was 1981 you know back in the say the 70s there weren't martial arts clubs all over the place uh, I used to box I did western boxing um, went to university had the opportunity to come do kung fu did it uh, and was invited to go to a demonstration competition in Singapore. Went to Singapore in 1987, somewhere I never expected to go, and it kind of took off from there. Was offered the, even before I went to Singapore, I was kind of offered, would you like to train as a Kung Fu teacher? Well, you know, I, I never thought, never thought of it before. And it's like, of all the things that I could do, uh, that sounded a lot more exciting. You know, the, it, it's not the kind of career that's suggested to you when you're at school. Um, but it was like, well, and that's, I've got a chance here. I've got a chance to do something more than most people do. I've got a chance to do something that ordinary people don't do. And, yeah, I, I took it and I never looked back. Um, and I'm in my f- 41st year of doing Kung Fu now. Uh, and, in, you know, since I, since I kind of decided I wanted to be a Kung Fu teacher, I've never wanted to do anything else. And, you know, I always say to people, if I won a lottery today, I'd still be up at 4.30 tomorrow getting ready to train. You know, would, I have no desire to do, to change, to do something different. Um, it's been a great journey and a very interesting one. You just summed up there enlightenment in its perfect form when you yeah you, you you've you've done you create the life that you just want to get out of bed in the morning to do aj i was asking you wasn't i about your military 
uh, your mi- was it your military experience? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I joined uh, kind of like right out of high school, so, uh, eighteen years old, and um, we joined up. It was I joined in the Army National Guard, so we left. We left for basic training, came back, and as soon as we got back, we deployed. Um, we deployed the first of the one third field artillery brigade. Um, I was a signal support system specialist, just dealt with all kinds of communications. But we were slotted as uh, military police, so we ended up working um, in a few different areas at this strategic debriefing center, which is when I first learned about military intelligence. And then after that, we did um, a few other things in country that had to deal with uh, detainee operations. Um, most of most of our missions was on base because we, we dealt with the prisoners like sort of inside. Um, the second deployment after you know rubbing shoulders with the MI uh, field, MI community, I did the human intelligence, and then uh, right after that training, we deployed again, and it was all like uh, all those operations were you know MI associated. We was on as uh, a mil- uh, MFT which is a uh, military, uh, excuse me, a military intelligence team, something like this, right? Uh, and we just did missions all throughout Southern Baghdad, just doing different things, pretty, pretty random things, actually. But, yeah. This sounds- oh, and one other, one other uh, is it, I, I did the DOD contracting thing out in Germany for a little while, um, working on an MI base out there, it was the uh, military intel slash NSA base. We're just doing security over there, though. Mm. Um, something that just comes straight to my mind then was Abu Ghraib. Was that mm. was that something? Mm. Can you explain how that like affected you when you were there, or what what relation was was that operation to yours? Um, it, it wasn't. So that's that is in the same exact field. Um, what happened there actually greatly affected like when something like that happens it just greatly affects every other one every other group that's in that field uh that abu Ghraib thing that they was kind of uh, um dehumanizing the, t- the detainees and taking all these like weird pictures that that uh, really made what we did very strict like we it and it changed from care custody and control when the Abu Ghraib happened, when the Abu Ghraib happened, we changed our policy from care, custody, and control with dignity and respect, right? Uh, because that's how we want to treat detainees, regardless if they're POWs or regardless if they've killed American soldiers, which most of them have. You, you still have to have that kind of dignity and respect. Um, yeah, and it, yeah, they, they really made everything pretty strict. And also, too, working in detaining operations, I could see how Abu Ghraib could have happened. That's another thing with psychology of human beings. And when you take people, you put them directly over somebody else. It does affect their minds. Um, but uh, that was, was, yeah, it was interesting, man. Yeah, we saw that sort of stuff with the, um, you know, like the scientific prison experiments and stuff back yeah. in the in, in eight seventy or 70s or i can't even remember mm-hmm. but it's kind of um what's it they divided a group of people in half 30 were prisoners and 30 were the governors or that you know what we call screws mm-hmm. um prison officers i i'm apologize yeah. um yeah. and within no time at all they they adopted this role of like I'm going to lord it over you, sunshine, and I'm going to make yeah. your life your life miserable. And and there was the other one. Was it the sta- that was the Stanford prison experiment? And then when the, the, the yeah. other one were the electric shocks, where they said they sat them in a room, sealed off from a the the person that they were electric shocking, and they were told, right, this this person's really bad, hit him with an electric shock, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's for you know, it's for the best of your country. No, I oh. Okay, and then they hit this, <laughs> they hit it, and it got work progressively worse. So, yes, and I think one thing that that highlights, AJ, to people that haven't been in conflict, is the reality of conflict. It's not nice. This yeah. stuff, stuff's yeah. always, this stuff's always going to go on. 
There's going to be crimes against humanity. There's going to be crimes against Geneva Convention. Um, it's what happens when you get a, a load of young testosterone fuel people. Yeah. Tell them that that's the bad guy and, and, and then let them loose. So, um, AJ, your background, I'm, I'm always quite, um, you know, fascinated in social psychology especially when it when it relates to trauma which as we we discussed earlier i've had a yeah i had a fair bit in my childhood which as i said ended me up <laughs> working for a hong kong triad gang um off my head and 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 uh, you know it was a it was a big comeback from there you know i had to start working things out did you did you have a stable upbringing aj <laughs> no man no that, that's probably half the reason why i joined the military i didn't uh no i did it was i did the whole gang scene and 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 group homes and foster homes and things like that and you know by the time i was 18 it was just like okay i you even you know having that kind of like background i mean i need to make a decision that's going to either drastically change or just keep doing some of the things that I'm doing, which is, you know, almost nothing. Uh, and I guess this is the, maybe the kind of person that goes into the military, right? I guess, especially in the beginning. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll just, I'm going to take a, a, a great gamble and I'm going to join the military. Like a lot of people do. The only thing is we joined, we were at war. So as soon as I went to basic, we just, we, I came home and then we just deployed and that's, that's how it's been in America and in the West for a while. Um, everyone that's been deploying to Afghan and Iraq and these other places, we've just been constantly at, at war. So it's, mm. yeah. And of course you've got the gun thing in America, which we don't have here. And I guess mixed guns and gangs, it all gets quite yeah. nasty. Oh yeah, man. I mean, they, you, we'll still have the knife crimes, but the gun crimes, uh, yeah, everybody has one. Everybody has one. Um, it was interesting that a lot of, so when the hunters joined the military, this is what, what we've seen is when hunters and, and gang members joined the military, the gang was actually pretty good uh, taking order and, and, uh, and doing what the drill sergeant said or what the, what the commander said. And the hunters were, were like phenomenal shooters. Um, yeah, yeah. And the martial art guys, like uh, they, they were obviously pretty good at hand-to-hand combat. Everyone had their little thing that they could add to the uh, to, to the group or whatever. But yeah, the hunters, great shooters, gang members, they could take a lot of shit. And there was a few other ones that I met when I was there. And the martial artists were just good at overall physical fitness and hand-to-hand -hand techniques. Yeah. yeah. And um, Ian, you said South London, that already roughness comes in, into my mind. Uh, do you know Brom yeah. do you know Bromley? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was Bromley, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was born yeah. in born in Bromley. Um really? Okay, yeah. 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 But I'm um, um, um Downham Tavern, Saxon Tavern, remember those? I'll tell you what, mate, I only I was yeah. really young when I lived there. Don't don't right. remember okay. an awful lot. I remember like there was a place called Petswood and Orpington and this sort of stuff and yeah but uh i'll mention it because recently i've been watching a lot of like films on the craze <clears throat> yeah and um also the essex boys uh murders so the um the kind of drug scene there when back in the the ravey days and and um yeah it's uh, it, it's quite full-on in that that part of england yeah yeah but, but did you did you have any experience of that sort of thing? Did you was your childhood oh, challenge, challenging? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I had a very good upbringing. Yeah, I had a very stable background, but I'm just one of the, I was just one of those kids who I needed to to get stuck in. I needed to have a fight. You know, I was brought up in an area where, yeah. It's, it's all about, okay, it's all about being a hard man, you know, South London, it's, it, you've got to be hard, yeah, it's, life is about being hard, and you work your way up a stack, and you start off at school, and, and you fight 
and you you're fighting to be the hardest in your class. It's fine to be top dog in your class, you know, and you want to get on the top. And then as you get older, it's being top dog in the local kind of area. The the Irish that you were by up the stack and it gets tougher and tougher and people getting knocked down, knocked down. Uh, and unfortunately, the logical progression is that you will end up in prison mm. and then you, you're in with a lot of really hard guys and you want to survive in there, you got to get tougher and tougher. Mm. You know, a lot of the people that I grew up with went down that route. Uh, you know, there's a, one of the guys, you see, he, he writes books, on the, the name in books, a few kind words and a loaded gun was one of them. Um, and he was one of the, the guys that uh, I used to knock about with in, in my teens. And when he wrote his, his big selling book, you know, he was 50 years old. He spent more than half of his life in prison. Uh, for me, Kung Fu was the way to get off that path. Uh, because it was still it was still about fighting it was still about challenging yourself it's about finding your boundaries testing your limits but you're not on that downhill path where you're going to end up spending longer and longer in prison and you know the way of kung fu is that you have the the, the family the, the master is the head of the family and then you have the older brothers and you have this structure. And the old guys, they've been there, they've done it, and they've learned their lessons and they're passing on their lessons to you, the, the young guy. And often in the, in the West, you don't have that structure. So you've got young kids um, running their own show, running their own gang, and... There's nobody saying, well, that you know, you're going in the wrong direction here. Um, and that's the difference in the Kung Fu family. Yeah, you have. What about your parents? What about your teachers? Obviously, they're saying, well, you, you're going in the wrong direction. You're doing the wrong thing. But as a, as a tough teenager, do you, are you going to listen to them? Mm. Yeah. Do you listen to them? Why would you listen to the Kung Fu master? when you don't listen to your parents because you know in a world where it's all been about being tough this guy has fought his way to the top you know this guy's been there and done it and therefore you have kind of respect um, and some parents make a good job but some don't a lot of people in the, you know, school teachers and social services what well, they don't conduct themselves in a way that gains respect for them yeah. and that's why young people aren't listening to them yeah they haven't tested their own boundaries they haven't proved themselves they haven't developed their own bodies their own minds uh and you know you've got a 13 year old saying that you know i'm more street wise than you i'm tougher than you well why am i going to listen to you uh, that same youngster faced with somebody who is, has really been there and done it says, well, yeah, you know what? Yeah, maybe I'll listen to this guy. Mm. Yeah. You, you reminded me then a bit about Confuciusness, yep. um, which I learned a lot about, an awful lot about in Hong Kong. And for our friends at home, one of the principles of, of Confucius was, um, so it's like boss looks after workers. In return, workers respect the boss. Teacher looks after the students. In, in return, students respect the teacher. Father looks after the family. In return, family respect. And you, you really see this in action if you, if you get under the skin in Hong Kong. So my yep. first, I think it was like my second day working in this nightclub I mentioned. Um, the, 
one of the triads said to me, so where do you live? And I said, oh, I've just got this flat um, top floor apartment. It's, it's empty. I've got no money for furniture, so I'm sleeping on the floor. The triad boss just went like that, took me over to the till, opened it, <laughs> took out a wad of cash and just went, I'm like, uh, how, how do I pay back? He's but it's just the way, you know, just the way. It, um, yeah, I think we probably all could learn from that over here. But yeah, I'd say, Ian, gosh, my generation, I mean, what my parents taught me, most of it was a load of crap. It was all etiquette from a bygone era. It was nothing about questioning, questioning. It's all about accepting, accepting that this is the prime minister. This is the MPs. They love you. They will do the best yeah. for you. This is a da-da-da. Yeah. And I'm not going to obviously knock parents, but some things I got, say, from my dad were really good. He was he was a real extrovert. Um, so, like, we'd be going on our ol- ol- summer holiday down to Cornwall, get to Weybridge. Yeah, we used to go. Yeah, get to Weybridge, there's always a bloody queue of cars over the bridge, you know, a tailback, yeah. tailback, a mile long. My dad would go, oh, right. He'd just drive onto the pavement, overtake everybody. <laughs> and then I'm not, yeah, folks, yeah. I'm not saying this is good behaviour. I'm saying that was my dad. He, he didn't fuck around, you know. It's yeah. like, right, let's get these idiots yeah. out of the way. It just drive, drive, just drove all the way down the pavement. to, And... Things like that r- really helped me, but a lot of it I've had to work out, work out myself. Do, can you relate to that? Yeah. I, a- absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it, yeah, it's interesting. I, as a young martial artist, you know, you thought, well, the teacher always gets respect. Yeah, martial arts teacher always gets respect, yeah. Um, and then you realise that actually, well, no, you don't necessarily get respect. Um, every time a new person comes into your class, every time you meet someone new, you have to win their respect. Yeah. And no title means you're going to get respected by everybody. No position means you're going to get respected by everybody. The only way that you're going to be respected is just by earning that respect. So every day you wake up, and it's a new challenge to to earn people's respect. And you can, and we, we see this all the time, with, particularly with politicians, you can spend 30 years uh, building up respect and you make one mistake and it's all gone. You know, your dad won your respect. Uh, my, my dad had been a fighter pilot in World War II. You know, he flew Spitfires and Hurricanes. And I thought he was great you know, because he, he had all that behind him. And he was a very quiet man, you know, because... All of that, all of what he had in his system, he got it out of his system. Yeah. He'd nearly been killed so many times. He's seen a lot of his friends killed and crippled. Um, you know, we grow up expecting World War Three was on its way because there'd been World War One, then World War Two, and we were expecting Number Three, and it never came. Uh, but we were kind of almost brought up to be ready for it. Um, but yeah, you—it's it, it's a good lesson for parents. Um, you won't, you don't automatically get respect to the word respect, and you've got to try to get into your children's heads and try to get it. I've got three, and the two younger ones, um, still a challenge. Yeah, still a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess I it's, um, I guess. It's a funny old system. I'm actually a youth worker, believe it or not. That's what my degree is in. Yeah. And I got a bit miffed with it all in the end because it's, it's just, you know, basically you're like pacifying young people for the fact that all they got to look forward to in their life is to go into a factory or to go to a call centre, mm. you know, and, and, then you got a lot of young people who, because they've had no support at home through the fractured family unit, are they can't 
they can't apply themselves to education. So university is yeah. not an it's not an it's not an option for yeah. them. And then of course they see people driving by in bloody BMWs and Mercedes yeah. and flashy watches and they're selling drugs and stuff. Well, what are you going to choose? You know, society tells yeah. you that's what you've got to aspire to to be a man, and and you can see how this um, disenfranchisement and and gang violence and stuff sort of sort of all come comes in you know yeah uh, it's uh, funny we were having a conversation around about this at, at breakfast today and the, you have you know in, in, in your terms you have the kind of people who found at least some degree of enlightenment mm. and you have those that haven't and those that haven't are the majority yeah. Uh, now it would be great if the world was run by enlightened people but because the majority of people don't understand the enlightened people they wouldn't vote for them so they vote for the people who are, who are appealing to the, the lowest level of the pyramid Yeah, and all the time that that system continues we're not going to make that big leap. We're not going to make that big progress. And, you know, we are. So you say, well, what do, what do we do? What do we do about it? You know, our, our perspective on that is that you work on yourself and you try to elevate yourself. You know, and don't start off by trying to work on other people. First of all, work on yourself, yeah. Fix yourself, fix your own problems, and then try to be an example for other people to follow. Yeah. And you won't change the world, but if you if you influence ten people to to do the same thing, and each of then those ten people influences another ten, you know things start to really. Move multiply and before too long uh it, it's spreading so i was just gonna say in that um you guys are breaking up quite a lot ah uh, i don't know are you a long way from the wi-fi thingy me jig no, we're sat right next to it okay we'll, we're we'll, right next to it. yeah we'll keep going because i think it's it's legible your audio's flicking out a bit but i think people can still um yeah, still get get what we're saying. So, uh, so yeah, you're 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 right in saying that. I mean, it, 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 it's like the story of Jesus, isn't it? He didn't try to change the world. He yeah. just picked he just picked twelve people, but he yeah, made sure yeah, he made true. sure he made sure they were receptive. That was the main thing. That he wasn't talking yeah. on deaf ears. That they were even though they didn't understand him after time, and they'd say, "Well, he's." So he summed it up really nicely, you know, don't try to remove the log out of your, your neighbour's eye until you've, no, sorry, don't remove the splinter from your neighbour's eye until you've got the log bone, I think is, yeah. is how he said mm. it. Yeah. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, and also his disciples said to him something like, yeah, wise Jesus, words. Yeah, Jesus, why don't you just like tell us, tell us what is enlightenment? How do we, you know, just 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 tell just stop talking in all these riddles? And he said, I'm giving you the milk because you're not ready for the meat. And um I think they're profound, yeah, yeah. profound words. So pe people at home, the the milk is the scriptures, the meat is understanding the scriptures not not just not just reading it like it's a, a, a story but the esoteric knowledge that they're, they're in and um having come to this at like 50 years old i'm finding it all finding it fascinating yeah um really fascinating so how did you guys get get together um how did you well, come to, come to be in the, the the land of the smiles, training in 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 the martial arts? Um, well, I I mean 
I, I visited here, I say, I visited Thailand in like 2016 and I was just, just vacationing. And I was in, I was in uh, like one of the main cities uh, close to ours it's called Chiang Mai. I don't know if you've ever been there. Beautiful city. I was visiting and there was, I saw like a, a bunch of pamphlets or whatever to go to, uh, to go to Pi. So I was looking at one of these pamphlets and it said, oh, there's, there's caves, there's waterfalls, there's great scene, mountain views. Uh, and I, like at the bottom it said Kung Fu. And I was like, what? There's a Kung Fu thing? I'm like, well, of course there'd be a Kung Fu thing up in these, this mountain town somewhere. And I'm like, wow, that sounds, that sounds, that sounds badass. But I didn't have time to go because I was with somebody else. I was like, all right, maybe next time. So once I was finishing up my, uh, my contract with the, um, over in Germany with the, uh, with the DOD, uh, I was like, well, I'll spend one month at this uh, Kung Fu place, or Kung Fu retreat. And then, and then I'll just keep going, uh, keep traveling and keep, uh, and I was, I think I was here. Yeah, I, was, I feel like it was, it was like, I was supposed to be a month. And I kept like extending it. I think it went up to three months. And uh and I was like, yeah, this is this is fucking dope, man. <laughs> like it was I don't really like to, to, to train martial arts, love it. To be in the mountains, love it. And Pi, love it. Uh Pi the, the town where we live in. Um, but also uh here, like everything wasn't about like everything isn't exactly about fighting, right? Um he's like 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 I know how to fight and I've been fighting my whole life. Trained knife, guns, hands, everything. Um, but I like the fact that I was working on that also. But then all the other the wisdom that they, they, they like like you just said, this Confucianism, just a bit of Buddhism, uh, some Taoism, and then the whole Qi energy, this thing which is separate uh from the from the Kung Fu, what we added into the training. I was like, yeah, this is uh, this is like exactly where I need to be. Like, I I wouldn't, I couldn't have planned to come here, kind of thing. Like, I, I, you can't plan to have an experience like that. You just have to experience it and then do what you will with it, right? So, uh, now I was like, yeah, I'll, I'm just gonna stay, and hopefully, this feeling that I was getting here, the idea was at least with this project hammer thing, and I'm working with Master Ian to do is uh to get it out to more veterans so they can have this kind of peace, this kind of peace, this kind of peace of mind, this uh, pathway to enlightenment. And there's other pathways, but this one is, I think is, is, is really good. Um, yeah. Um, so now we're here just working on this, working on the Kung Fu, working with the students here, trying to elevate them to work through their demons. And then obviously they're not all military. So, so uh, sometimes we get vets from different countries here. But um, with the Project Hammer stuff, we wanted to just focus on veterans and veterans with this kind of combat stress, this depression, anxiety, and, and definitely some parts of post-traumatic stress. This stuff can be good for them. So, yeah, so once once we found out the intent and achievable, I was like, yeah, we'll stay and, and, and work it out. It's fascinating. I just want to dive in on the the enlightenment bit, but what we've got to remember is the, it, the it's esoteric knowledge for a reason, isn't it? It's 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 something you have yeah. to aspire to want to want to discover, and of course, as Ian said, ninety nine percent of people don't. So I'm mm. on on the podcast. Um, sorry, folks, I don't wish to sound condescending. I'm just saying it how it is. I'm kind of sat here thinking, how do we, how do we put that in terms that people could understand or take take something away from? So, let me ask you, AJ, what what's the kind of? Um, I mean, if I give an example of one thing on on the pathway uh -huh. that I I would say is. Uh, fundamental to grasp. Um, and for me would be gratitude. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the, you know, when it, even when it's the toughest, 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 I'm like, it's, 
God, is that the, like the worst you can do? Because I'm still here and I'm still loving this life. And I'm so lucky that I'm here. And, and many of my comrades obviously are not. Um, I think my two of my best friends drank themselves to death. And mm. one of them, one of them drowned on LSD on our, on our holiday. Yeah. So every day for me, it, it, I'm living for them. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I think gratitude is where, where it is a fundamental starting point because if you're not grateful, then I think you're playing the victim role. Yeah, um, yeah. So over to you guys. Let 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 me any, say anything that you 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 feel like. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we could talk about it. I mean, diet is obviously another one. Getting rid of the birth certificate identity. Um. Yeah. Uh, now, what I suggest is if you want to point people in the right direction, don't don't tell them what to do. Yeah, don't tell them what to do because if I tell you what to do. Then you you immediately go on the defensive. You know, someone tells you what to do. I right, do this. You see, you know, why should I do that? You know, maybe I don't want to do that. Actually, I'm not listening listening to you at all. Yeah, I'll do what I want to do. Don't you tell me what mm. what to do. Yeah, that's that's a human mind working. Yeah. Instead, if you try to lead by example, yeah, people look at you and I tell you what. That guy's pretty salty here. Yeah. That's someone who's getting it about right. Maybe, yeah, maybe I want a piece of that. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like that idea. Yeah, I want a piece of that. And that's what we mean by leading by example. Yeah. Work on yourself. Don't try and force stuff on other people. Yeah. Look, at, look at yourself first. And do you think get, getting our vibration right is important there, the, the, the energy that we're giving off? Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, and people will recognise that. And even the people that think that the, the idea of a vibration is a complete load of woo-woo, um, they will, re will recognise it, yeah. Mm. They won't like the terms that you use, but they'll see, okay, yeah. This, this person's pretty salty. Yeah. Mm. This person's got something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's really interesting. Mm. You know, I mean, we're, we're really in the, the self-defense world. Yeah. The person who's got the vibration just right almost never needs to defend themselves. Mm. Yeah. There's other people who've got that vibration that it's just kind of confrontational. Yeah, it's they're they're always going to need to defend themselves. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes, as a podcast host, that's something that we, well, we or I, I have to try to manage because um, on the one hand, I've got a lot of people out there that they they love this show. You know, they love good love what they get from it. I try to do a motivational video every morning when I go for my jog around the block. And I am acutely aware that some people this day will be considering taking their own life or they'll just have a really challenging day in front of them. And, you know, my aim there is just to drop in a little bit of light, you know, just drop, yeah. Drop something in there for them to go. Do you know what? Chris Rule loves me. That's a bloody good way to start the day. You know, yeah. I'm not. I'm not unloved. This life isn't yeah. as chat as bad as I think it is. You know, he's pointing out some good. And then, of course, you. I suppose you've got to avoid, like you say, in being dictatorial and 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 it it, it it's a balance. But I guess. People have just got to look at your results, haven't they? You know? Yeah, yeah results. Yeah. 
I, ra- I ran a thousand miles nonstop bar sleeping at the side of the road, you know, the length of the UK. Most fun thing I ever did. No hardship in there whatsoever. Well, I did fracture my leg <laughs> halfway down the country and that, that was something I had to o- overcome, but I did. Just the sheer beauty of being in Scotland and, and putting my backpack on and just running along the beautiful coastline. Just me and I'm free and I love life. I love it. And my dream, something I dreamt of doing like five years, it, it's coming true. And it's like, what's not to love in that scenario? And, and what's difficult about it? Everyone can put one leg in front of the other and get a flight to Scotland. Ev- everybody, you know, yeah. might not have to go the speed I went. Some people go a lot faster. Um, and uh, yeah, it's get, getting that balance right. So guys, give us an example, because it's just talking to AJ, you can tell you're a humble guy. I love America, uh, uh, Americans anyway, because I think I've just had such great experiences with my brothers and sisters over the pond over the years and traveling and meeting U.S. Marines and, 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 and stuff. But AJ, you, you, you know, you're not a big, brash, loud American, obviously. No, you, no. You, you're clearly on that, you know, on that journey. What's it like, guys, when someone rocks up where you are and they're not on the journey, can we say? And let's just say that e- ego, is, ego has led them to a fight school in Thailand and they're there to break shit. And <laughs> is, is this a, an, a, you know, a familiar occurrence? Absolutely. Yes. That's it. Every, I was my fan, every, uh, every martial art boxing gym I've ever been to. It, it is that, it is that, uh, but here we try to specifically work on that through the Kung Fu, which I, which is, again, which is why I like this place. But, uh, yeah, sometimes we we get it, but um, it's uh, how do I say it? it's I because we, you know like, like Master was saying I was saying like when you grow up fighting you really you know it sort of through and through and you can add martial arts on 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 top of that and 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 fighting competition fighting and coaching so these kinds of people you you do recognize them and sometimes i could even see myself like this which i think is is important but um with the ego stuff um it's um the other well first i for my thing what i'm teaching is like well why are you here why why did why did you come here what was the thing that you want to achieve and then whatever that is i try to get them there at least get that as much as possible uh and working on themselves as they get there, right? And a lot of the times, from what I've seen, it, it, it'll be them standing in front of their own goals. Like, it's, it's this there. Uh, and you can, as an instructor, you can help them through it. Like, get them through it. And as a martial arts instructor, it's like, okay, you have the ego, but yeah, I also do. Uh, I also know how to fight also. Like, I'm, I'm not going to let it get too out of hand, but I will... If your beast comes out, I can recognize it. If your demon comes out while you're training, I can recognize it and I can deal with it. And the, But the idea is for them to deal with that while it's out there and it's going crazy. It's like, this is where you, this is it. This is when you actually get that down and then realize why it happened, what happened and how, how to stop it from happening again. And with this chi energy and this chi work, like actually lowering your chi, which is like kind of lowering your energy from your head down to your like stomach area or lower tantine is what we call it here. When you do that, when you breathe, that engages your parasympathetic nervous system and it brings it back down from the fight or flight uh, to, to where it's supposed to be like normal, like a normal human being, right? It basically, when that ego comes out, demon comes out from the student, whoever they are, uh, you can try to use the Kung Fu techniques the, the whole setup to bring that back down. And the more and more that happens, the more and more, from what I've seen, they're able 
to uh to handle that stuff and some have complete uh which is it happens every once in a while like a mind shift between uh where they are and where they're trying to be and it, it happens I've, I've seen it uh, it's happened for for me here where it's like oh my my whole brain is just like oh, oh i don't even have to be i don't have to be a dick i don't have to be an asshole and i know why i'm being an asshole and then then it's like now you're on the path to actual growth this is the kind of person that wants that needs to go back to their home to their families and everyone sees it changing like oh my god this is so much better than how you were this is the kind of growth i think that's uh that makes this place worth it right or makes this training worth it, it makes kung fu worth it yes and i i've been say, saying ian it's Ma- master ian isn't it up to you. Up. <laughs> No, my for me apolog- as as a student, definitely. Yeah, yeah, no, my apologies. I I, I I meet a lot of people. I always think respect where respect is 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 due is the place to come from. Um, have you had any calamities? Then have you had some guys come over and they just want to bruise it out and 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 before you know it, they're sort of packing their bags and they're all upset and they didn't quite make that connection. It's, it's our job to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. Mm. Uh, so if you've got somebody that's very kind of, okay, they're really wound up, they've got a lot of anger, they've got a lot of aggression, yeah. Then, okay, it's our job to, to fix that. Yeah. And... What well, a lot of people are used to, you know, they, they've got to show off. They've got to, they've got to, you know, make their point. And they're expecting that we're going to do the same. You know, we're going to kind of square up to them. And yeah. Say, yeah, actually, I'm a bigger man than you. No, you're not. I'm the bigger man. No, actually, I'm the bigger man than you. Uh, but that's not the way of Kung Fu, yeah. The way of Kung Fu is to conduct yourself with dignity and humility. Yeah. So... You know, if someone comes in and says, yeah, I'm a big man, you say, well, yeah, you are. You know, and I respect that. You know, you see, you know, you, yeah, you've been there, you've done it, et cetera. Uh, and you don't have to, you don't have to prove your point with me. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to show off because, I've got respect for you. You know, you see where you've been. You, know, you see what you can do. Uh, <clears throat> so we're not going to kind of rise up to that level because that, that just ends in a fight. Yeah, that ends in a fight. We are very solid, solidly grounded in our level. Yeah, mm. we will gradually bring you down. To that level, yeah. And in the beginning, you might think, "Yeah, well, this is not what I came for. I came here to, to learn how to crack heads." Yeah. But in the end, it's like, "Well, this was a really great experience." Mm-hmm. Uh, the the guy who the the hardest case I've ever had to deal with um, became, in the end, one of our strongest supporters, yeah, and strongest allies. Um, even though he was uh, he was touch and go for a bit um, and that's you know that's your real victory is to win someone over and create a friend yeah, yeah. that's when you really got it right you beat people up you make enemies you know, it, sooner or later the whole thing crashes it all comes falling down yeah you you win people over and you make friends and you make outlays and you continue to ascend, you continue to rise. Yeah. I was just going to say, am I right in thinking chi is the eternal energy, the, 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 the life, the, the force that flows through all living things? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, am I doing the right thing then? Because I, when my son has a wobble, I say, calm, 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 universe, 
And I want him to feel that huge thing that we're a part of that, that, that Western cult, well, culture in general isolates us from and tells us we're this birth certificate identity. And you're called Chris and you've got to make your hair look cool and you've got to drive this flashy car and you've got to get to this standard in school and, you know, don't let anyone say anything. And, 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 and all these mental barriers that are put on us. And I just want him to realize everything's cool all the time. And you just got to, yeah. and that's even before we get into like chakras and, 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 you know, the, the deeper levels of understanding of, of, of this, am I sort of in the right area with him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all a bit complex. Um, but in, interestingly, you're, you're actually touching on some of the, the quite uh, deep teachings of the Buddha about mm. yeah. universal conscience and about uh, what, what in Buddhism is called absence of self, realizing we're all part of the same thing, that we're all connected. Yeah, mm. uh, That's quite kind of deep Buddhist teaching. She, she is your energy, yeah. And when your chi rises and goes, yeah, that's when you when you see it rising up in the body, yeah. And when it sinks, you're cool. Yeah. Uh, look, the the really interesting thing here is that it's there in English language, yeah. It, if you heat, if your chi becomes heated, then it rises like steam to your head. Yeah. If you cool your chi, then it'll condense and fall like rain down to, to your abdomen. Yeah. And in our language, we talk about people being hot headed, fired up, yeah, wound up, heaty, yeah, psyched up. Everything's about heating up. Mm. And then you've got cool down, calm down chill out everything's about cooling down yeah. and, and that absolutely sums up your chi mm. heating your chi cooling your chi yeah. fired up what, what's what's fired what's up yeah that's your chi yeah. cool down what's cool what's down that's your chi yeah. mm. uh, you understand it when you take away all the complex terminology. We've had it in our language for generations, and loads of people who don't know the first thing about chi mm. use, use that language. Yeah. Mm. Even in Thai culture, right? Our Thai language to calm down is what Jai Yen. Yeah. Jai Yen. The cool heart. Cool heart. Yeah. Mm. And Thai, if you want someone to calm down, it's cool heart, cool your heart. Have you on that subject? Like, this is something I find fascinating, and and for people who haven't been in the East, won't most likely will have no idea of. And this is the a I'm going to say Asian, but I'm thinking predominantly Hong Kong Chinese and Thai. Is this uh, this issue of face? And um, it's incredible. Uh, friends at home, for example, everything's about respect in, 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 in these cultures. And I'll give you an example. In, there was a situation in Hong Kong where a delivery boy carrying coffee rocked up to a, a tailor's shop and he you know, went up in the lift, knocked on the door, the tailor answered the door and he said, here's your coffee, you know, that's 20 bucks. And the tailor just looked at him and went, I didn't order coffee. And the young man starts to get flustered and, and embarrassed. He's like, no, no, you, 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 you did. And my understanding is 
the tailor should have just gone, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, I did, and, and saved this guy's face, right? What happened instead was the guy broke into his office that night with a razor blade and slashed every single one of the gentleman's suits for all his customers' suits. And it it's such a, a you know, a, a strange concept to explain but but we we all have it to a degree. Uh, one other example: we we were at a pizzeria after a business evening in in Hong Kong, and one of the chaps told he said this joke that I just thought was hilarious. He said, "You know this business?" Um, he said, "I I think is I'm addicted to this business because every time I try and go away, it just pulls me back." <laughs> And for some reason, ways I thought it was hilarious. So I laughed out loud, like like we would in the you know would would in England. And um, later that evening, my business partner Vance pulled me to one side and he said, uh, "Quissa, well, we don't do that here." He think you're laughing at him. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's, he's, that was so funny. And yeah, yeah. And of course, I'd I'd made this guy lose face and. Um, what moving across to your your neck of the woods i was at the full moon party once and they'd set this bar up on the beach as they do made of like crates covered with a tablecloth or whatever and the, the i think a lot of that stuff is kind of can we say organized crime is a, a kind of in there running the show and so you've yeah. got these young young guns and in Thailand, they know how to fight from like three years old or something, don't they? They're, they're all, they all can hold their own. And anyway, this drunken Westerner, I'm thinking he's English, thought it would be funny to jump into the middle of this bar and like pretend to, you know, serve the drinks. Or, of course, they didn't, they didn't get it that he's just a drunken Westerner being a twat. They, they, to them, it was the ultimate, like, hey, you're coming into our place of work, trying to make us look, looks. And they turned on the guy and they battered him. And when I stepped forward to go and lie, I was just going to go and just, just grab him and say, sorry, 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 and, and, and drag him out. And my brother just went, no, <laughs> you leave it alone, Chris. And he'd lived in Thailand many years. So I, 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 I left it alone, but I'm, I'm, fascinated what you guys take on because you've come from a part of the world where westerners have been run over and shot um for what i'm guessing was making people lose face do you have any kind of experience of this uh, yeah yeah i mean it uh in this kind of realm out here in thailand it's it's definitely a exactly the story that you uh that you said it's something it just happens out here right it's it's not a constant thing but it definitely like happens and and uh it's when it comes to face it's best it's actually really advantageous for you to give them their face and that actually could could uh de-escalate the entire situation it just by that, just by giving face, even if you do mess up, you can just do that because that's exactly, it's like exactly what you said. They're worried about losing that. Right. Um, and if there is a problem, it's definitely, all right, well, what needs to be done here? Does somebody need to leave or whatever? And it's just, you know, uh, it's the same when we teach the students, right? Uh, you, if you can talk and I've learned this during the military police stuff is, uh, de-escalating a situation and a lot of that is figuring out what somebody wants what the other person wants is it face is it respect is it space it, it is a thing and it's also an easy thing like once you realize that and you can take your ego down it's actually really easy to to deal with um uh yeah just doing the human intelligence also really kind of helped me like with setting my ego back to get what i want out of uh, another person here you know, kung fu we can we work on like presence and, and chi energy we work on it through this way um but yeah if you know that it's a, it's, it's a culture like this where everybody wants to save face um if you can 
set your ego aside, which is always growth. When you can do that, then you can have a situation come out the way you want it to come out instead of you losing control. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, how it, oh. Oh, just lost our video for a second. Just asking you to start the video again, fellas. Don't know if you can hear me. In the meantime, I will tell a joke, folks. So there was this guy Sorry. and... They do have... I've got a feeling this phone's overheating as well now, Chris. It is uh, about 37 degrees here. Ah, uh, okay. Um, we'll maybe have to wrap up then. And um, It's been a fascinating chat. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Uh, that was also... Okay, one more time. Yeah, sorry, folks at home. So you probably guessed it's it's very hot in Thailand and, and this yeah. affects electronics and uh, we're getting some overheating problems so I, th I think we maybe wrap up on this one but we'll 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 go for it again at any time because this is just so fascinating it's so kind of you gentlemen to um to give us your time so face is something we've got to consider um master ian how is kung fu received in thailand um thailand obviously being the home of um of thai boxing Oh, I think we got another freeze. Oh, we have that Can you hear us? Yeah, I hear that. Did you hear? Did you just hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, uh, it's an interesting one because obviously uh, it's perceived as foreign. Yeah. And well, ties are ties are brought up to think that Thailand is great and if it's not tight it's second best mm. yeah that's a bit like uh, that's a bit like growing up in cornwall right <laughs> um so we have to keep a slightly low profile yeah mm. and we have to you know in thailand if you're going to put your kung fu schools flags up you've got to make sure you put the thai flag and the flag of the king above your flags because if you don't you got a problem with the police yeah um and then that you've all, there'll always be the problem of okay if you look at us we're not chinese yeah people well, how can you be a kung fu tt you're not chinese yeah. uh so we've got a double problem yeah that we're doing kung fu in thailand and we're not chinese uh well You've just got to be extra good at it, you know, because in Kung Fu, if you haven't got a Chinese face, you've got to be three times as good mm. as someone who has. Yeah. And that's, that's the truth. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in Thailand, well, there's not many Kung Fu schools, so at least we stand out. Yeah. Do you ever um, have like a mixed martial arts thing go going on? Maybe the, you know, the Muay Thai guy comes and tries his hand or am I, am I getting to um, Jean-Claude Van Damme film now? Uh, we get lots of people who've done lots of martial arts, you know, people from just about every martial art. But if you come to our school, then, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to teach you Kung Fu. And this is what I say to everybody, you know, if you come here, um, you've got a great opportunity to learn Kung Fu. But if what you really want to learn is Muay Thai, then you're wasting your time here because you might as well go to one of the Muay Thai teams. Master yeah. Ian, you've ne never come across a chap called Winston Ellis by any chance? Name rings a bell. Yeah, it's really funny. He came on the podcast. Winston, hello, Winston, if you ever get to see this. We're an absolutely lovely gentleman. Um, yeah. I think Afro-Caribbean heritage, I think yep. I'm, I, I would say. Yep. And um, it, it's really funny. He's been in lots of films. So he's been in, in all the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, franchise, uh, you know, ser series. Um, he plays one of the, 
the ghost men that comes up from the the the, the sea. Excuse my bad description. Um, he's also been in the latest Bond film, and I also noticed he was in the film um, Rise of the Foot Soldier because I watched it watched it the other day, and then I saw his name in the credits. He must have been much younger. But um, the crazy thing was, he's a complete stranger. Never met him. In, and yet when we started talking about Hong Kong, we knew all the same people and um, through the martial arts scene, not, not that I've been involved, but they tend to end up as doormen in, in Hong Kong. So I just wondered if, uh, if you might have crossed paths. Okay, my Kung Fu is from Singapore, not Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, so I, I tend to know the Singapore guys and not the Hong Kong guys. Mm. I know guys who would know him. Yeah, I know. I know quite a number of the Hong Kong guys, but he's he's not one of one of my kind of circle. Yeah. Do you get to Singapore often? Not as often as I used to. Uh, I used to go there once or twice a year. <coughs> it's changed beyond recognition. Uh, I'm afraid it's not somewhere I really want to go nowadays. Uh, it used to be a great place. It's it's a different country now. Just like Hong, just like Hong Kong, yeah, massively um, commercialised. Sadly, my my teacher died in in twenty nineteen. Uh, there's a few of the old guys left over there, but they, I'm afraid they're they're, they're dying off. Um, that's a big shame. And there is no, there's not really a young generation coming up to replace them. So Kung Fu is a dying art. I mean, there's still people doing it, but it's the popularity has decreased massively. It's still much stronger in Malaysia than it is in Singapore. Mm. So I tend to go down to Malaysia and see the Malaysia guys. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on the Shaolin monks when they travel the world doing their, their expedition? Is that Does that cause any controversy or...? Causes a lot of controversy in the kung fu world, yeah, yeah. Um, and the the controversy controversy is centered around the fact that uh, number one, they're not doing old style kung fu; they're doing the kind of modern show kung fu. Mm -hmm. And number two, you, you've got this kind of dilemma because they're not really monks, but on the show, they're kind of dressed as monks and acting as monks. Mm. Now, if you see a Kung Fu film, then of course the actor in the film is just acting the part. Yeah, and we don't have any problem with that. But there's this, it upsets a lot of people that the guy who goes on stage dressed as a monk and acting as a monk, when the show's over, puts on a, a baseball cap and heads down the park. Um, mm. And the, the people don't seem to understand that, you know, they, they do the work, they're doing a show. Um, so it, it upsets a lot of people. Uh, mm. It is what it is. It's very one dimension as well, isn't it? It's all about the ego. It's about kicking high and, and backflips and, and beating up 10 guys. And it's kind of missing the whole yeah. spiritual, spiritual journey. Yeah. But, that is still the stuff that grabs people's attention. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I mean, obviously, well, not obviously, but I've kind of dealt with this. I've seen that the, these monks have been on the same kind of uh, stages there and at the same show, same performances. There was a guy in the UK who used to handle all their contracts. So he was the kind of promoter and he would hire them in and he would get the venues. And ultimately, it's all a business. You know, they get paid to come over. Um, and it's a great opportunity for those guys. Uh, you've got the guy, the promoter in the UK. It's a business for him. He's making money. Um, I mean, in all fairness to them, they are very good at what they do. And they're often uh, young lads from villages out in the middle of the sticks who would perhaps never have had a chance to travel very far from their village 
And suddenly, bam, they're, they're going all over the world. So it's a great opportunity for these guys. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's complex. Ian, what do your students do? Um, Master Ian, sorry. Uh, what, what do they do in the evenings? Do they, I mean, do people go for beers or is it all, very, you know, are people kind of a strict regime on their diets? What, 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 what are they eating when they're over there? Do they... Do they stay at the centre or do they get accommodation yeah. lo locally? Well, they, they stay here and we feed them very healthy food based on kind of homegrown organic vegetables. Mm. Uh, and we try, no, I try to discourage them from going and ruining, ruining it all in the evenings. But mm. it's... For a lot of people, it's a holiday. It's a kind of food holiday. Um, so you get some people that take it very seriously. They come over here, they, they eat the, the kind of organic vegetables and they go to bed early and you get other people that come over here, eat a little bit of the organic vegetable, go down the town, get a burger and head for the bar. Mm. Uh, it's not a prison. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and we're not monks and we're not expecting our students to be monks so uh, my advice is you to get the best value of your time here you know embrace it uh, live as cleanly and as healthily as you can and then maybe uh, when, you've, when you've done your time here Take a take a little bit of time to chill out somewhere else in Thailand and ruin all the good work you've done. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to um, not to get the best out of your time here. But yeah, some people it takes a long time to learn. And AJ, what's what are your plans for the future? Do, do you intend to to master this art and then teach others? Or, oh, well, you're obviously teaching others now. Yeah, uh, on my way to mastering, yeah, teaching, which is also teaching, is, is has its own things, uh, what is like, uh, it produ produces um, challenges and where I need to work on myself, right? Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to take this all the way as far as it goes. My nonprofit, Project Hammer, is for to help military veterans with their with the demons um, and in order to help them, yeah, I'm going to have to be in a way that to be a senior kind of teacher, I have my own gym or work here as long as I need to, in order to, to help these guys. Um, and because of where we are situated and where we're located in the training and the setup, the staff, the workers, the teachers, um, it's best to stay here for a while um, to get project him where I, really want it to be um so just to clarify so um obviously it's mastery in school but you you've got a deal going on here where you can do the veterans thing at the school yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so it's, it's it's a it's a separate non-profit uh that works with in conjunction with name uh, so if help. i was a if i was a traumatized veteran I'd, I'd be heading straight to you. Just the lovely aura you guys are giving off is, it just sounds, I don't know, a, a paradise in a storm, if you know what I mean, when we've all, we've all yeah. been, been through a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. how, how, do, how do these service personnel get fun, funding? Or well, how that, can they? Um, well, um, so that, that's because it, it, it's kind of a new thing. So we do, Need for this is a non profit, this is a charity. We do need funding in order to get veterans to come in, uh, to, to pay for the lodging, training, transportation, things like that. Uh, um, now, as far as what it needs for a veteran to actually qualify for that, not too, not too much. Um, an honorable discharge from the service, uh, because we are teaching them pretty dangerous stuff. So it, it has to, it's, yeah, it, it, I know you've seen it to where 
when some people get are released from service and uh, it's probably best they don't learn anything else dangerous for the rest of their lives, right? Uh, I've seen this, um, and this is Kung Fu, so it, it is, we, we do have a lot of dangerous techniques. So I, I would like for those vets to have served honorably, um, which is most guys I know, right? Um, um, and then have, have a, uh, a, a uh, what is it? Um, from their doctor. I, uh, like a medical sort of? Yeah, like a medical thing from their doctor saying, like, I, I have um, this anxiety caused from, from, uh, from my military service. And then Project Hammer, the way I want Project Hammer to work is for us to pay for those guys to come here and just have a whole month of here of training and working on themselves, working on themselves. And then after that, they'll take it wherever they want to take it. Can you take people with physical disability or physical challenges, I, I should say? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, wouldn't tell, I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't mm. say no to it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Have you thought of contacting, I mean, in the UK, we have a lot of veterans organizations and, and charities for example there's one called help for heroes which get get an awful lot of um funding well they obviously haven't this last two years for reasons we won't go into but um also the uh, british legion which is our premier sort of veterans organization i'm just wondering if you could get funding from from these folks um to get some some of our guys and girls over there. Yeah, man, that, that would be amazing. And, and the project Hammer too, like actually the, the first person I've ever met from the UK was, I met him in Iraq. It was, it was his, him and his unit. That was a big uh, thing for me. Cause I actually saw like, it was the first time I met Europeans was in Iraq and project Hammer is for anyone who served with like Amer I'm American, but anyone who served with American armed forces, whether that be, uh, people from the UK, Romania, uh, uh, anyone who was allies with us, they would, the funding would be for them also. So, yeah, it would be great to, to get any kind of help we could from any other organization. And do, do these individuals need any level of skills in the martial arts or can they just walk in from, from a, a non-martial art background? None. We, we don't, we, uh, we, they don't need any kind of experience. I, to be to be more specific, uh, and this doesn't have much to do with experience. And but coming with an empty cup is is pretty important. If you do that, you'll you'll leave here, uh, and I think in, in a good place, in a much better place. Yeah, exactly. So, um, gentlemen, what I'd love you to do is if you can put all your links in an email to me, just and. Uh, any link that you want to promote so people can get in contact with you or they can find out yeah. about fun funding or all, all the stuff just to get some, some folks to you. Cause I would imagine um, for friends listening that these, these guys are well set up to welcome you, welcome you yeah. in, meet you, meet you where you are at your level no, yeah. don't don't worry about you know getting beaten up or anything. It's it's there's yeah. cl clearly a lot more. It's a lot yeah. deep, lot deeper stuff going on here. I, I think it's just wonderful. You're not going to set on set upon them on the first day with all those all those no. sp spears behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a very constructive environment. Yeah. Now I've got to say, at the moment, at the moment, we don't have funding available for people people need to be self-funded yeah. uh we're working on it but we're not kind of people that are used to fundraising in charities you know where yeah. we're kung fu teachers yeah. um we need a bit of help on that but um with that proviso uh there's a lot we can do for people yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah Yes. And so anybody listening, we, we do a lot of sort of veteran stuff on this show. Um, if there's anybody out there that can help in this area, please get in contact. You can email me through my, my website. Um, because helping someone through trauma or through a challenging time or just to develop self-confidence, 
it's a very small cost compared to what they're then going to go out in the big wide world and, and create and produce and uh, mm. take this positive spirit with them. And, and, and we need that, you know, we, we need that. Yeah. The, 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 the world is a tough place to be at times for veterans. The last 20 years have just been, gosh, you know, bordering on criminal, can we say? And, yeah, um, yeah. you know, we need, we need, we, we, we need to support, to support these um, wonderful men and women. So if there's anybody out there that thinks you, you can do the mass and, and, and help us out here, that would be, that yeah. would be great. And uh, if you can buy my ticket, <laughs> I'll nice. give you a shout. I'll give you a shout out on the podcast. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> um, gentlemen, well, what can I say? Is there anything else you, you'd, you'd like to add? Something I might not have covered. Well, uh, I would. You, oh, sorry, you, you mentioned the uh, uh, earlier about this gratitude, right? Uh, I think you, you did something with, with your son. It was very like present, focused. Like you said, you said like uh, sort of calming down and realizing that everything's cool. That's something that they try to get across to you in basic training: is uh, don't panic. Once you don't panic, your training kitten comes through, right? And this and but this being present. When you're present and you don't take it, you take everything pretty just objectively. It's like, okay, I'm here. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You don't judge anything, right? And then from that, you know, what people like to do is they, they actually like to just judge. But the other thing you was talking about is being gratitude. So from being present and from presence, you can get gratitude. Uh, I do think that is everything. here, And even during, in the middle of training, it's that, uh, having this gratitude of uh, I'm here and the, the, the view here is, is actually is, is exceptional. And I, it's very easy to be, be have that gratifying feeling here, the great food, the, the views and everything like this and the training, but it is a huge thing to be, to be gracious to the training, to the instructors. And it's, um, yeah, I think I definitely wholly wholeheartedly agree that that kind of gratitude feeling is what kind of keeps you, keeps you grounded and keeps you, you know, uh, uh, on the path. Yes, exactly. Um, what would our friends that are, that are no longer with us, they, they'd love to be sat here having this chat now and, yeah, yeah. you know, their lives were cut short and yet here we are, we, we have this beautiful day. Well, it's probably mm -hmm. evening where you, where, where you are, but yeah. you know, we just have this incredible world and, it really is something to get to a place where you can just sit with the sun on your face, even if it's behind a cloud and, and you can just be and that, and you want for nothing. You need nothing. Mm. You just love, just love being in, in that moment. Mm. Um, as a sort of techie podcaster type person who's had to learn a lot of stuff about microphones and all, I'd, I'd encourage you to, um, focus on your social media, get a, if you haven't already get a podcast up and running, um, because you guys can create an awful lot in that area and get, get your message out there. And it's, it's yeah. a, it's a lovely fun place to be. I mean, look at my day. I, I, it's a dream for me. You know, yeah. you talk about, pre talk about presence and gratitude. So I got this one the other day. Naughty Chris, I got it because I argued with the traffic warden. I, I, uh, I uh, yeah, yeah, a nice. parking ticket, yeah. yeah. Well, my ego kicked in, right? And I'd just been watching all these Essex boy movies where the C U N T word is every third yeah. bloody. <laughs> and he pulls up, yeah. so he pulled up and he went, Your back wheel's on the line. And I went, Who are you, a copper? <laughs> He's just some <laughs> c civilian guy in a van, right? You know, with the thing on, thing on the roof. And it's my, e yeah, I mean, it's great to recognize that's my ego coming out, you know? I, mm -hmm. I, I, I let the situation get the better of me. I wasn't pre present. And so, anyway, I thought, oh, he, he drove off and I knew he was going to come back. But I thought, okay, I'll test myself here. Am I bothered about a 30 quid parking ticket in this beautiful universe? Uh, is it going to affect my, no, it's not. So I went and picked my son up 
I walked down to pick my son up when I came back. <laughs> there we go. Um, but um, it's, it has, it's been bugging me a little bit, especially because my admin is not always good. And I'll, you get 14 days to half the cost of it if you pay it. And, yeah. and it's been there for quite a few days. And I'm, my point is, during this conversation, I haven't thought about this once. Mm. I've been completely present. I So present, I feel that half of me is in Thailand. And um, I'm extremely grateful, gentlemen, you know, uh, yeah. you're, you might not have realized this, but you're making my dream come true. And, and mm-hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm yeah. eternally grateful. You ought to drop in here sometime, Chris, next, next time you're in Thailand, look us up. Oh, absolutely. Yes, that's a, that's a, that's a given. I might just uh, run away from it all, and <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there tomorrow yeah. night. Yep. Yes. Cooking of the country retreat. Yeah. So, um, just stay on the line, fellas, so I can thank you properly when I hit the record button. But for the purposes of the tape, massive, massive um, thank you, Master Ian and AJ. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you've gone. You've gone blank. Um, I'll keep talking and to everybody at home, big love to you all. Please look after yourselves. Please, please go yeah, out. And respect, yeah. Yeah. There we go. We're back friends. Please go out and seize the day. And um, just remember tough times don't last tough people do. And it's a bright future out there for us all. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Chris.